Are you tired of the same old run-of-the-mill teal and orange that everyone is using? Well, strap in because I'm about to show you that there's more than one unique flavor of this iconic look used in Hollywood. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to transform your next project with these new unique varieties that you may have never heard of. All my life I've been bespoken. Your words have been so broken. I've been under your hypnosis. Cell phone became your brother. Internet replaced your mother. So a lot has already been said about the teal and orange look, and a lot of films use it for a very good reason. But rather than focusing on its appeal and the psychology behind it, instead, I want to focus on the fact that there's more than meets the eye. There is more than one flavor, and by the end of this video, you'll be equipped with five new ways to give your project a fresh, distinctive style. And before we jump into this, if you've ever found yourself spending hours upon hours tangled up in the color tools, wishing there was an easier, faster way to grade your footage like the pros, well, stick around because later in this video, I'll be sharing something truly game-changing that will revolutionize your workflow. First up, we have the film print teal and orange. This invokes the classic, timeless aesthetic of a Quentin Tarantino or Christopher Nolan film. You know that look, the deep, rich blacks with the subtle teal in the undertones. And it's not just color grading magic, it's a naturally occurring effect on film print stocks. You see, when a film is printed on Kodak 2383 or Fuji 3513, it has this natural teal appearance in the undertones. Applying a print LUT to a tone ramp, we're able to see this in the undertones. Now, if you don't already have a film print LUT, they do come free in DaVinci Resolve, and if you're on Premiere or Final Cut, I'll include a card to our 70 LUTs Master Collection that comes with several different film emulations. The only important consideration when using a film print LUT is to add it towards the end of your pipeline, just as if it was being printed to film. Then do your color corrections before, balancing the exposure and color temperature. If the effect is too strong, just dial it back with the mix control. If you're into classic celluloid, a film print LUT captures the nuanced teal and orange shades naturally, giving us this iconic look. Up next is the summer blockbuster teal and orange look. Now, this is a style that probably comes to mind when you're watching a Michael Bay film like Transformers and other big budget action movies. With its vibrant high color contrast and max color separation between teal and orange, it's a style that really stands out. The one key difference between this and the spy thriller teal and orange, which we'll get to in a minute, is that the highlights stay warm and more natural. To create the summer blockbuster teal and orange, people will usually tell you to push cool tones into the shadows and warm tones into the mid-range and highlights using the color wheels to create that color separation, but it usually doesn't come together very well and the blacks are tinted blue. Instead, use this formula. Start by pulling down on the undertones and the red curve to introduce teal. Set the same points for green, but leave them alone. We'll come back to them. And for the blue curve, pin the center and slightly pull down on the top. Contrast is the next key for the style, so to really give this oomph, you can use the contrast control, but for best results, let's create an S curve with the Luma curve. Next, open the vector scope, and now we'll come back to the green curve to fine tune the teal color while watching the trace, and the oranges with the blue center point, keeping an eye on your skin tones. But why stop there? Let's accentuate this and make Michael Bay proud. In the Hue vs. Sat curve, isolate Cyan near Till and pull up on the center point. And do the same for the oranges, making those skin tones really pop off the screen. Let's check the before and after. Michael's gonna be calling. If you're all about creating bold, striking visuals that look big budget, then this is your ticket to achieving that. Up next is a personal favorite of mine, the spy thriller Teal and Orange. Now we're stepping into the realm of extreme color separation and off the charts color contrast. This style screams drama, suspense, and edge. It's used predominantly in spy movies and thrillers, and it's not just about looking sleek and cool, it actually directs the spotlight to the talent, amplifying their performance and making each emotion a compelling part of the narrative. To create it is a little trickier. There's a few more steps involved, but stick with me. It's something you can totally master. Now, a key thing to keep in mind here is we're gonna go aggressive with pushing teal into the entire tonal range, including the highlights. So if the sun is out, it's gonna give what should be warm daylight tones an unnatural cool look. So it's best suited for interior scenes or gray overcast days without warm daylight. Our example here is perfect because we actually have both and it's gonna look sweet. First, to maximize skin tone separation, we'll qualify our skin tones, refine the key, and jump to the outside of the mask. 
Next, in the outside mask, which is everything but the skin tones, we're gonna push Teal into the entire tone range with the offset control, keeping our eye on the vector scope as we create color contrast with the skin. Now it's time to make these elements pop. Using the Huber Sat Curve will boost the color in both the teal and the skin tones. I prefer a bit more density in the teal, so using the Huber's Luma Curve, I'll set the points for teal and pull down to give it rich depth. Finally, to finesse things, we'll go to the Lumiverse Sat Curve and pull the teal out of the shadows so we have clean blacks. And it's optional but not required, you can do the same to the highlights so you have clean whites. Here's the before and after. Mmm, that is one clean look. Use this if you want to bring your talent to the forefront in such a way that shouts top tier production. Use it to extreme or as a subtle effect to give it a more interesting cinematic visual. Now, you might be asking, just how many variants of teal and orange can there possibly be? Well, we've been working with complementary colors of teal and orange up until this point, but what if we got a little inventive? Consider this. What if we were to split the teal, moving it into a split complementary color scheme? This not only expands our color palette, but also boosts color separation in a visually engaging way. Take, for instance, the electrifying world of John Wick. The hyper-stylized palette didn't just happen by sticking to the conventional teal and orange palette. It called for a more nuanced approach to color theory, fragmenting the teal into shades of blue and green to create a more layered, visually compelling narrative. Intrigued? Let's dive into this fascinating approach I call split complementary teal and orange. We'll start with a clip that already has the spy thriller teal and orange and we'll build on top of it. Let's begin with visualizing our objective using a gradient ramp. Picture this, as you glide from left to right, we start with pure black in our deepest shadows, transition into blue, then teal, and finally a touch of green as we climb the tonal range. This creates the separation or that split in the undertones like you can see here in the vectorscope. Now to achieve this, we'll start by elevating the blue curve just a notch furthest to the left. Next, slightly lower the red curve to the right of blue and add the tiniest bump in the green to the right of red. Each adjustment and where the point is plays a critical role in crafting the look in the undertones, so be sure to copy this. Let's now see it applied to the clip. A quick toggle on and off of the adjustment highlights the color separation in the vector scope. All that's left is to add some contrast with an S curve and clean up the shadows and highlights with a Lumiverse Sat Curve. A little can go a long way, so if you find the look too intense, consider dialing back the overall intensity to look on an adjustment layer or as a compound node. This look is highly stylized, so if you're after a richer palette that goes beyond the milk and toast till and orange, then consider this for a visually striking look that sets your work apart. Now onto the final flavor of teal and orange, the enhanced art direction teal and orange. Rather than forcefully injecting teal and orange into the tonal range with the color controls, we seek harmony with the existing art direction and try to enhance or amplify it. You'll notice teal and orange in films through the subtle interplay of lighting, wardrobe, and set design. But color grading plays a pivotal role in fine tuning the color palette, transforming it into something more captivating for the audience. To amplify the art direction in your grading, hue curves can be handy, but in this instance, I'll be utilizing the game-changing point-and-click color grading offered in CinemaGrade. In this scene of a dancer leaping through the air, I'll use the Vectors tool to manipulate the sky and skin to be more complementary, accentuating our teal and orange. First, I'll focus on the skin tones. Clicking on the skin and holding down the Shift key, I'll drag upwards to increase the saturation in just the skin. This is giving us a nice orange base color. Next, I'll click on the sky and drag up to swing the trace towards till so it sits exact opposite to the skin tones. To create further separation, I'll hold down the shift key while dragging up on the sky to increase the saturation. And to really make this look dramatic, if I hold down the command key or control key if you're on Windows and then drag down, it increases the density in the sky. Wow, that transformation is really stunning. For consistency, I'll apply a touch of the same density to the skin by clicking and dragging down so they look nice and rich, similar to film. Let's compare. Here's the before and after. This is a more subtle way of achieving the teal and orange look without imposing a different color palette. We're enhancing and refining the existing art direction so that it's more powerful and engaging. So what do you think? Which teal and orange will you explore? 
Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you're wanting something that's easier and faster, that takes out all of the guesswork of coming up with different teal and orange looks, it's worth checking out Cinema Grade like you've seen here. With it, you're able to see real-time examples of different teal and orange effects. To celebrate this occasion, we've created a teal and orange LUT pack that's exclusive to Cinema Grade. Just click on a favorite to apply and dial back the intensity. Then fine tune the look like you saw in the last example by clicking and grading right inside the viewer. And to thank you for watching this, for a limited time only, you can get 20% off Cinema Grade with coupon code TEAL and ORANGE20 at checkout. Plus, we'll have the teal and orange LUTs available for purchase if you send us an email to support at cinemagrade.com with keyword teal and orange as the subject. Cinemagrade works in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro on the Mac and Windows. And we also have a version for still images called Photograde that works as a standalone and as a plugin inside of Lightroom and Photoshop. For more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and check out all our other grading videos. There's lots of topics that may be of interest in helping you to create cinematic looking imagery. You're on your way to making better looking video and images. I'll see you in the next video.